Hey, hey, the mite lady is here collecting those mites for missions. And our parish nurse is checking blood pressure in the new parish nurse office located next to the family mailboxes in between services today. Today is the last day we're collecting food items and monetary donations for the Wichita PD homeless outreach team. Check out the display in the gathering place and see Mary Lou Rusco or page two of the gray pages for more details. The Sojourners and Stitches Connect group meets this Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. No experience or sewing machine required. See page two of the gray pages for all the details. The second Saturday's Connect group meets this Saturday at 5.30 p.m. at Riverside Cafe on West Central. Please sign up at the information table and see Joyce Taylor for more information. Next Sunday, you'll have the opportunity to update your directory photo as well as contact information. So please see Joellen Ryder or Lori Casey in the gathering place and they'll be happy to assist you. Connect group leaders will meet next Sunday at 6 p.m. Please make sure and have someone for your connect group there to represent you. Talk to Pastor Tom if you're unable to attend. Church Council will meet at 7.15 p.m. Please let Council President Rich View know if you are unable to make it. A free light lunch will be provided by the Wichita branch of the Orphan Grain Train next Sunday, February 10th at Holy Cross Lutheran Church from noon to 2 p.m. Information will be shared on how help is needed to provide relief for human need worldwide. Tours will be available at the warehouse at 911 West Maple at 2 p.m. This is a come and go event. See Gus Weshi if you have any questions. But that's not all that's happening. Be sure and check out the new and improved risensavior.net and those great pages for more ways that you can get involved and help share the love of Christ.
Good morning. Today we're going to focus on God's great love for us. That's not new. But now the challenge. What are we going to do in response to his love? Let's rise as we worship him. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ever one God, world without end. This is from his word. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. And teach me, for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love. They are from of old. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. Sin is broken, 
you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you on Lord of all. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you. be with you. Let's pray. Gracious God, you knew each of us even before we were born. You showed your love for humanity through Jesus, your beloved Son, who cast out demons and healed the sick. Empower us by your Spirit to love you with our whole heart and to love our neighbors as ourselves, so that the light of your love may shine before others through us so that we may all glorify you. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading for today comes to us from Jeremiah, Old Testament, but a reminder to us of how much God already knows about us. Chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Don't let those words just go. Understand what they mean. God says, I put my word into your mouth. How does that make you feel? You get to share the message of God's love. Wow. Well, the second reading reminds us of what his love is really all about. 1 Corinthians 13. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I know no one here has ever heard that before. So I'm gonna do a poll. How many of you had this at your wedding? I'm looking at a lot of you going, yeah, I did your wedding. <laughs> wow. God's great love for us. How do we respond? Please rise. The Gospel of our Lord from Luke chapter 4. 
Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his message had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Ha! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is this teaching? With authority and power, he gives orders to evil spirits, and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. His love, a response. Please be seated.
let that just soak in. Let it really just fill you with what that means. God loves you. Not, not just he loves you, he knows you, and he still loves you. Okay, that started to hit, right? God knows you, and he still loves you. You know, I, I go back uh, here at Risen Savior, and, and, and I realize, man, it really hit me, especially this second service. I've done over 300 weddings. Ugh. What a responsibility to look at so many of you, and I'm going, wow. You weren't here. You were maybe in the other building. And you came up, and you made these vows, and you heard this statement about love. It's not about our love. It's about his love. Because that's where our love really starts to kick in. When we understand who he is and what he's done for us, that's the real package. Understanding the constant presence of God's love every day of our lives. What's that do to you? Yeah, I, I should be seeing a lot of smiles going, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That's what it's about. And then I look at spouses looking at each other going, Ugh. no, it's not about that. God knows us. God's love is so beautiful. And then he gives us the opportunity to share it with one another. Joyce read it. He's talking about the fact that God's word is in your mouth. God's word's in your mouth. The joy, the peace, the excitement of life is in your mouth. Are you letting it out? You're trying to swallow it. You see, there's something that he said in those readings that are so, so simple and yet so real. It says, get yourselves ready. You heard 1 Corinthians 13, right? Again. And you heard all those words about love and, and, and the anticipation and getting ready. This is what marriage is supposed to be. Did I say that right? That's what marriage is supposed to be. Why isn't it? I didn't get a response. Why isn't it? Because it starts with him. It starts with understanding who he is and getting ourselves ready. And, and then he told us, you know what? If you have faith the size of a, a mustard seed, you know that other passage that talked about that? He said you can move mountains. What about you? We have this thing called life that we all face. And there's some pretty big mountains out there, aren't there? You know how you're going to move them? If you have faith the size of, put it to work. You have his word in your mouth. You have his, the boldness, the proclamation of all that he is is yours. Use it. Is it really that simple? Well, maybe here's a problem. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, anybody know that kid? I think we all know the attitude right? Aren't you glad none of us are like that? When I was a child, I acted like a... But when I became an adult, 
What'd you do? <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the problem. That's what I did. One of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, put it in these words. When I became a man, I put away childish things, including the fear of childishness and the desire to be very grown up. You know, there's a balance in there. There's a balance in in what it means to really grow up. And it's not just about putting away childish things. It's about having an excitement as a child. I had a privilege yesterday of going to the, the Hyatt and it's Youthquake. That's where a lot of our uh, junior high youth are right now, or they're coming back from it now. But just the excitement of seeing these kids. Why? Because their parents weren't there. <laughs> you think that's the reason? Probably. Uh, no, it's just an excitement about new stuff, doing new things, and a joy that was in here. You hear the difference between putting away childish things and being like a child, excited about life? The concept is one of grow up, putting away childish things. It's not a matter of putting away what it means to be youth, the excitement of what life is. But it does mean when I became a man, I gave up childish, hear a difference? Childish ways. Oh, man. You know, I have the privilege of being in front of you and seeing your faces. And I'm, I'm looking at people going, okay, you're putting away childish ways. Anybody know what that looks like? You know, the, the beauty of having PowerPoint is I can show you what it looks like. Now, I was very, very careful when I chose these slides to make sure none of these are members of the church. <laughs> Yet. Where are they? There's something that kind of resonated in there. The boss. Who's in charge? Are we allowing him to be the Lord of our lives? Are we allowing his love that goes beyond all understanding and let it put away our childish ways? You, oh man. I'm looking at all these faces and they're all looking up there going, I know that one, I know that one, I know that one. I, I, I. Did you realize they're not all the same age? And they're not all kids. But they're all acting childish. When I became a man, I put away childish ways. Now it's our turn. What are we going to be doing? Are we going to get rid of all the childish stuff and start being childlike? To really trust in his love. To be able to really understand what it means to know what it means to know him. And to let that reflect through us. You know, I I don't just throw up slides. I want you to see what's in the middle of this one. You see it? Yeah. You know how easy it is to find what's wrong in life? I don't need to tell you that. You know it. Wait a minute. Um, Today is known as what? I feel the excitement grow. It is Super Bowl Sunday, and all God's people went, whoop, big deal. Why? I don't know about you, I'm waiting for the commercials to come up. 
I'm excited. Being childish, yeah. Find something to be excited about. Find something to get the joy of life, to, to really let the childlike faith grow. It's your opportunity. It's your challenge to see things that are happening in this world that we live in, and what are you going to focus on? All the people were amazed and said to each other, what is this teaching with authority and power? He gives orders to evil spirits. They come out. That same word is in my mouth, it's in yours too. That's what he said. That same spirit is in you. What's going to come out? The evil spirits looked at our Lord and they said something. They said something very powerful. We know who you are. Do you know him? Do you know his power? Do you know his love? Do you know what he's wanting to do with you right now? There was a, a situation in our gospel reading for today. Simon Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Anybody ever experienced that before in this last week? <clears throat> yeah, Pastor Nick, get ready. <laughs> no. Anybody experienced that lately? Oh, wow. And Jesus spoke, and he said, come out of her. Man, the images are all around. This is, this is just one of them that I found that, that trying to get this concept there of, of Jesus going up to Simon Peter's mother-in-law kind of blew me away because she's pretty young in that picture, isn't she? And the Spirit said, we know who you are. And they came out. But I want you to understand something, maybe, maybe, no, this is one of those things that I really love about Scripture. And if you've heard me speak before, you know my favorite Bible passage, wives. Yeah. Wives, submit yourselves unto your, grow up, grow up. Understand what it means to be filled with an excitement to be alive. That's what I want you to see today. Know God's great love for you and what it means to be in Him. Simon Peter's mother, mother-in-law, it says when Jesus said, do you know what she did? You do, don't you? It says she got up and she served them. When you think about God's great love for you in Christ, when you think that he, he loves us in spite of ourselves, he's forgiven us, he's paid the price for all of our sins, what's that do to you? She knew. First thing she did when she got up out of that bed was to serve. Is there a message in there for us? In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise. May God's peace, which really does surpass all understanding, Keep your hearts, your minds, your lives filled with the excitement that comes from his love. Amen. Join with me as we proclaim who he is in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, you know.
one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son to gather his worship and glorify, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church, and acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the light of the world to come. Please be seated as we make offering to him. Did you miss out on all the fun? A lot of fun, a lot of laughter, a lot of joy, yet there's more to be done. As we join together today, we, we ask God's blessing upon Youthquake as it comes to a close, but we also ask God's blessing upon all that's happening. You know, I, I watched that video and I saw, you know, it was just last week there was snow, and now it's what? Welcome to Kansas. Let's rise as we talk to our Lord. Father, today is a day that as a country, as a people, we set aside and we say, it's gonna be the Super Bowl. So Lord, as so many activities are focused on making it super, let us really focus on what makes our lives super. That's your great love for each and every one of us. Lord, in your mercy, Father, fill us with an excitement of what it really means to know, to know your love for us in spite of ourselves. 
And Father, help us to share that with one another as we allow the joy of our salvation to be more than just a phrase or words, but a way of life. Lord, in your mercy. Father, the, the youth are coming back from a quake, a time of excitement, a time of, of growing, a time of experiencing new things. Lord, let that not just be a day, let it be a weekend, but let it be a way of life. Fill them with the excitement, and each and every one of us as well, with the excitement of what it means to be yours. Father, as you feed us this day, not just with bread and wine, but your very body and blood, allow it to be more than just an experience. Allow the newness of life to fill us. Lord, in your mercy, and Lord, this country that we live in seems to always be in such a turmoil, but especially now. So as we seem to have gone back to work, we pray for our government. Let them be not about themselves, but about you. And let your will truly be done. Father, bless not just this day, but this life, that we use it to your glory and to your praise. As we take all the stuff all the mountains in our lives, and we allow your faith to move them. Father, take all of our stuff as so we put it into your hands. That, O oh Lord, is where we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Join with me as we talk to God. Heavenly Father, we come before you in humility to confess our sins the areas of our lives that get in the way of our relationship with you. We find ourselves stating one thing and doing another, not walking the talk. We know there are areas of our lives that need to change, yet our desire to stay the same creates a barrier preventing change from happening. We know what Jesus taught and preached, but we allow the loud voices from the world to get our attention. We know that you call us to serve and use our gifts but we often don't listen. We know that we're in the world to impact our lives with the saving words of Jesus Christ. Yet we keep the message to ourselves. We know that we have power to move mountains and work miracles. We lack faith and miss opportunities in front of us. We know that you know us by name, yet we don't need your call when it's revealed in clear ways. In your great love for us, Forgive our sins and He's put his word in our mouths, your mouth, mine. And you know what that word is? Through faith alone, all our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And then he gives us yet even more. As he fills us not just with ourselves, he fills us with himself. On the very night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Do this as you remember me. He took the cup, he blessed it, gave thanks, gave it to them, and he said, drink of it, all of you. This cup's the New Testament in my blood. It's shed for you for the remission of all of your sin. Do this often as you remember my love. Welcome to his table. Please be seated.
lives forever. You are my strength, God of grace and power. With everything you hold in your hand, till you make time for me, I can't understand. I praise you, God of earth and sky, how beautiful. Your unfailing love, unfailing love, and you never change, God. You remain the Holy One in my unfailing love, unfailing love. You are my rock, the one I hold on to. God of earth and sky, how beautiful is your unfailing love, unfailing love. And you never change, God, you remain the Holy One and my unfailing love. It's your unfailing love, unfailing love, and you never change, God, you remain the Holy One, my unfailing love.
rise. God's love poured out on the cross of Calvary. May his very body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith of life everlasting. Depart knowing his peace, knowing his love, knowing him. So as we go, the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord is looking upon you with favor. Go in his peace. Amen. You choose the humble to raise them high. You choose the weak to make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside and give us life. The same love that set the captives free, the same love that opened eyes to see, is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens wide, the same God that was crucified, is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. One aside and speak the words, you are mine. You call the sin again, the proud. Come to me now. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same love that set the heavens wide. Yeah.
No, that's not how it went. Please be seated. Again, good morning. Welcome to a beautiful day God has given to us. It's not snowing today, so it's going to be a great day. And who's going to win? Who cares? Let's greet one another and celebrate what it means to be His. My strength. 